Seit über 50 Jahren lagern im Hochsicherheitstrakt der US-Notenbank FED 1500 Tonnen deutsches Gold. 26 Meter unter dem Meeresspiegel, auf dem Felsen von Manhattan, sei es am sichersten Ort der Welt verwahrt, beteuern die Amerikaner. Doch in den vergangenen Jahren wurden Stimmen in Deutschland laut, die forderten, dass das deutsche Gold wieder auf deutschen Boden zurückgeholt werden solle, wie es die Franzosen in den 70er Jahren mit ihren eigenen Goldbeständen gemacht hatten. Frankreich hatte sein Gold damals mit Kriegsschiffen in New York abholen lassen. Der große deutsche Goldschatz hat einen ungefähren Gegenwert von 70 Milliarden US-Dollar und wäre im Falle eines Euro-Kollapses eine sichere Grundlage, um eine neue Währung zu decken. Die 1500 Tonnen Gold sind ein Produkt deutscher Arbeit und deutschen Fleißes. Sie stammen aus der Nachkriegszeit, als Deutschland im Zuge des sogenannten Wirtschaftswunders große Außenhandelsüberschüsse generierte. Doch nun weigert sich die FED, deutsches Eigentum wieder zurückzugeben. Nach jahrelangem Tauziehen willigte sie 2012 ein, wenigstens 300 Tonnen bis zum Jahr 2020 wieder auszuhändigen. Für das Jahr 2013 war geplant, 50 Tonnen Gold nach Deutschland zurückzuführen. Tatsächlich kamen da nur 37 Tonnen an. 32 Tonnen stammten dabei aus Paris und nur 5 Tonnen kamen wirklich von der FED. Bei diesen 5 Tonnen handelte es sich obendrein nicht um Barren aus Deutschlands Originalbeständen. Es waren neu gegossene Barren mit 2013er Prägung. Deutsche Politiker, die die deutschen Goldbestände kontrollieren sollten, kehrten unverrichtet der Dinge aus New York zurück. Die FED weigert sich überdies bis heute sogar, eine Barrenliste offenzulegen. Führende Wirtschaftsexperten der Welt sind sich einig. Das deutsche Gold ist weg. Deutschland wird das Gold nie wiedersehen, warnt der Ex-Goldman-Sachs-Manager William Kay. Und dies, obwohl die FED es niemals hätte anfassen dürfen, denn es war ihr lediglich zur Verwahrung anvertraut. Dies ist ein unvergleichlicher Akt der Unterdrückung und der Provokation und er wird von deutschen Politikern aktiv mitgedeckt. Vor einigen Wochen wurde bekannt gegeben, dass selbst die Rückführung der 300 Tonnen Gold bis zum Jahr 2020 abgebrochen werden solle. Der Druck aus den USA wurde zu groß, sodass die deutsche Politik einknickte. Der CDU-Politiker Norbert Bartle behauptete vor den Medien, die Amerikaner passen gut auf unser Gold auf. Bis wann muss Deutschland in jeder Angelegenheit blindlings vor den USA ducken? Wann stehen statt landesverräterischer Politiker wieder Frauen und Männer auf, die Deutschlands Interessen mutig verteidigen? Dürfen Erträge aus harter Arbeit einer ganzen Nation gierigen Banken und Finanzmogulen zum Fraß vorgeworfen werden? Solange selbst US-Politiker wie der Kongressabgeordnete Ron Paul grundsätzlich daran zweifeln, ob in den USA eingelagerte Goldbestände verschiedener Länder noch physisch vorhanden sind, hat Deutschland jedes Recht darauf, wenigstens eine Überprüfung der eigenen Reserven zu fordern. Ein souveräner Staat muss das tun dürfen, sonst ist er nicht souverän. Bitte teilen Sie dieses Video, um den deutschen Goldskandal vor der Weltöffentlichkeit bekannt zu machen. Vielen Dank. This audiobook is entitled The Fort Knox Gold Scandal and what it means to you. The author is Dr. Peter David Beter, the internationally respected political economist and financial consultant, now famous as the man who opened Fort Knox in 1974. The present message was recorded March 1, 1975. It is a sequel to Dr. Beter's earlier audio book, How to Protect Yourself During the Coming Depression and Third World War, which was recorded October 11, 1974. Dr. Beter's credentials include 10 years as a practicing attorney in the nation's capital from 1951 to 61. Six years as counsel to the United States Export-Import Bank from 1961 to 67, to which he was appointed by President Kennedy. And five years as one of the chief developers of private international business in the Republic of Zaire in Africa from 1968 to 1973. Further details on his career are given in Who's Who in the East and in other biographical books, including the Blue Book of London, England. Dr. Beter is now involved in the work of the American Patriots Committee, which he founded with other concerned citizens on August 20th, 1974. Dr. Beter welcomes inquiries and may be reached at the American Patriots Committee, 1629K, the letter K Street, Northwest, Washington, D.C., 2006. My friends, in late December 1974, the great gold robbery was nominated by William Sapphire of the New York Times as one of the four candidates 
for the biggest news story of 1975. And no wonder. For one thing, making off with America's gold supply will doubtless go down in the annals of crime as the biggest theft in all of history, around $50 billion at the current market price of gold. For another thing, the alleged burglars are none other than the kingpins of America's most powerful family, people whose names would top any social register and who are associated in the public mind with good manners and philanthropic activities. But most of all, this astronomical case of embezzlement will, unless it is corrected soon, leave America utterly defenseless against the chill wind of monetary instability that is sweeping the entire world. And herein lies the danger for the dynasty. They have made mistakes. They have left a trail. Their guilt can be proven. If their strenuous efforts to suppress the truth do not succeed, the American public will be able to see them for what they are, suave, manicured traitors who have wounded our beloved country more grievously than Benedict Arnold ever thought of doing. Here now is what has been happening. You will probably recall the visit which congressmen and newsmen made to Fort Knox on September 23, 1974, to look at America's gold stored there. This so-called gold inspection visit which was unprecedented, was arranged by our government purely as a publicity gimmick to try to defuse my charges that the gold had been illegally removed by private interests. Only one of the 28 compartments was opened to display gold to the visitors, and that compartment was selected ahead of time by government officials. The compartment that the visitors entered into was indeed stacked from floor to ceiling with some 36,000 metal bars, but they had a noticeably reddish hue instead of the gold and yellow for which gold is renowned. The reason for this odd color, my friends, is that what the visitors saw was not pure gold, that is, .995 fine or better as required for use in international monetary settlements. It was instead melted down coin gold containing 10 percent copper, something known in monetary circles as junk gold. Of course, such highly impure gold does have some value in a market sense, but not as backing for currency since no nation on earth would accept it for that purpose. Thus, for monetary purposes, and that was what the Fort Knox visit was all about, the visitors saw nothing that could be counted as part of America's alleged monetary gold hoard. A number of the visitors noticed a very apparent reddish tint to the bars, but not being gold experts, no one thought to ask about it during the news conference held afterward by Mrs. Barry Brooks, the Director of the United States Mint. Thus the visitor's day at Fort Knox ended in a light-hearted carnival atmosphere just as it had begun when the visitors chose popsicle sticks to determine their order in viewing the open compartment. Mrs. Brooks happily said, See, it's all here, and then sent the congressmen and newsmen off on their happy way like a bunch of Cub Scouts leaving a den meeting. As for you and I at home, the dynasty's controlled major news media served up a nice pablum to swallow, a few words to the effect that Fort Knox had been visited 
a few pretty but not too revealing pictures, and the comforting pronouncement of Mary Brooks that it's all here. For further reassurance, we were also informed that the gold inspection visit would be followed up by an independent audit of the Fort Knox Gold by the General Accounting Office and Arm of Congress. The Fort Knox Gold Inspection hoax largely succeeded in hoodwinking most Americans into believing all was well at Fort Knox. But not so Europe and Canada. When the foreign reporters among the delegation to Fort Knox filed their reports, their observation of the reddish appearance of the gold led very quickly to a correct evaluation of the hoax that had been perpetrated among the American people. Financial eyebrows the world over were raised in amazement. The United States Government, putting its best foot forward, had failed to display any good delivery gold. The only logical conclusion was that there was none available to show, exactly as I had charged. So transparent and blatant was the Fort Knox Gold Inspection hoax that for a time last fall it was a favorite topic of political cartoons and jokes in Europe. Those words of Mary Brooks, it's all here, have been used widely by humorists in the foreign press, which largely lies beyond the reach of the dynasty. As a catchphrase for the worldwide laughing stock the United States Treasury has become, it's a sad commentary that here in America the dynasty's stranglehold on our mass media is so complete that a phrase which is ridiculed everywhere else, it's all here, is seriously accepted as gospel truth by many Americans. But we think it couldn't happen here. Within a month, on October 21, 1974, the General Accounting Office quickly submitted a report on its audit to the Treasury Department. There was not a word of official comment, however, until December 3, 1974. On that date, during Congressional testimony, Treasury Secretary William Simon casually dropped what should have been a bombshell by agreeing that the gold in Fort Knox is inferior to other United States gold. That is an admission that there is no good delivery gold in Fort Knox, and as such flatly contradicts an official Treasury document dated August 31, 1974 which shows 24 million ounces of good delivery gold in Fort Knox. And to make matters worse, even the document of August 31 conflicts with previous official documents showing 147 million ounces of monetary gold in Fort Knox, more than six times as much. But our major media, doing the dynasty's bidding, virtually ignored Secretary Simon's astonishing testimony concerning the poor quality of the gold in Fort Knox. What the media did choose to report, giving the public exactly the opposite impression about what was going on, was Secretary Simon's announcement during the same testimony that on January 6, 1975, the Treasury would auction off two million ounces of gold. Then on December 9, 1974, quietly and unnoticed by the general public, the Treasury unlawfully bought two million ounces of gold from the tiny exchange stabilization fund so as to have something to sell on January 6, 1975, in their effort to discredit my charges that America is gold poor. By interesting coincidence, the Treasury's purchase completely emptied 
the Exchange Stabilization Fund. On December 11, 1974, Mr. Thomas Wolfe, Director of the Office of Domestic Gold and Silver Operations of the United States Treasury, confirmed that the General Accounting Office audit of the Fort Knox Gold had been completed as of some undefined earlier date. And yet the news conference to release the audit, which the Director of the United States Mint had earlier promised for December 23, 1974, failed to materialize. Instead, as that date approached, the release date for the audit was suddenly delayed to January 31, 1975, without explanation. Meanwhile, I was informed through my confidential sources that the Treasury and the General Accounting Office were trying to collaborate on what to say in an audit report that would not be too dangerous to release to the American people. The audit itself, according to my sources, reveals that there is nothing left in Fort Knox except some 90,000 bars of junk gold unfit for international monetary settlements. If this is what the audit shows, it is in complete agreement with my charges. On January 6, 1975, the celebrated auction, so-called, of United States gold was carried out. The auction had only one purpose, to fool the American people into thinking we still had gold while in reality squeezing out one last little bit of bullion from our country. But mounting public enthusiasm over gold, combined with lingering suspicions about Fort Knox, had created a potentially dangerous situation for the dynasty, which they had to nip in the bud. They dared not allow demand on January 6th to exceed the two million ounces which were put up for sale, since the Treasury then would have been expected to arrange promptly for a second auction, something they could hardly do since there are few ounces of good delivery gold left in America. America is gold poor. Haben auch Sie ein öffentliches Unrecht zu beklagen oder von einem Sieg zu berichten? Bleiben Sie damit nicht allein. Schreiben Sie noch heute an klagemauer.tv. Klagemauer TV. Nicht gläserne Bürger, gläserne Medien, Politiker und Finanzmogule brauchen wir.